Hi everyone, this is Bella from Unlock Your Design. It's time for a new Jinky horoscope. This is a week with a lot of things happening. We have the conjunction between Pluto and the Sun in the Gate of Limitations. We're going to have the Rave New Year in Gate 41, which is the archetype of the Originator. We also have a new moon here in Aquarius. And we have all the planets that are going to be direct at the end of the week. So Mercury starts going direct and the same with Uranus. A lot of forward moving energy, a lot of possibility for intention settings and for feeling that energy that naturally allows us to go forward. What you see in front of you is the chart for Tuesday, January 17th. And that's when we're going to have a new archetype. The sun is in the 60. I'm going to give you a quick summary for gate 60. This is the gate of the magician. The magician is in transit from January 16 to January 21st. This is the gate of acceptance. It's the hexagram of limitation. In the gene keys, the frequency goes from the shadow limitation to the city of justice, and it's the pathway of realism. In the I Ching, the 60 is part of the hexagrams that have lake as the bottom trigram. So you can see all of these hexagrams here in this part of the wheel have the lake trigram on the bottom. The specific hexagram has water on the top. That's the same thing as saying that the energy is made up of lake, which is the 58th, lake over lake, and water, which is the 29, water over water. So the whole frequency band in the shadow Limitation is half-hearted dissatisfaction, gift frequency. Realism is commitment with vitality. Cidic frequency, justice is devotional bliss. In the astrology, we have Capricorn, which is the wise elder, the teacher, and our ancestors. It's service to others through the grounded intent to preserve planet Earth. We also have Aquarius. This is one of the keys or gates that are on the cusp between two different signs. Aquarius is the revolutionary change agent, service to self-growth through the expansion of consciousness. This is part of the quarter of mutation where the purpose is fulfilled through transformation. All those hexagrams have two yang lines on the bottom. In human design, this is the gate of acceptance, like we said. It's in the root center, which is a pressure and a motor center, has to do with foundation and stability. The low frequency of the root center is stress, the gift frequency is drive, and the city frequency is evolution. The harmonic gate to the six is the three. They form the channel of mutation, which is an energy that fluctuates and initiates. It's generated because it comes from the sacral center, People with this channel are agents of evolution and they bring something new with everything they touch, except the limitation of not knowing when the next quantum leap will occur. The frequency band for that whole channel goes from the shadow of depression to the city of glory and it's the gift of mutation. The programming partner is the 56. So we have the cusp between Aquarius and Capricorn with a 60, and then we have the cusp between Leo and Cancer, and that's the 56. So if you have the 60 in your activation sequence, you're also going to have the 56. If you have the 60 in one of your nodes, you're also going to have the 56. You will see here that the shadows of limitation and distraction go hand in hand, the gifts of realism and enrichment go hand in hand, and the city of justice and intoxication go hand in hand. We also see that the 60 is individual circuitry, and it's part of what we call the knowing circuit. The main keynote here is empowerment. The incarnation cross is going to be activated by the conscious and unconscious sun and earth for the next four days. From the 1-3 profile to the 4-6 profile is the right angle cross of laws. This cross is made up of the 60, the 56, the 50, and the 3. And this is a cross that has the energy of holding the boundaries of laws. You understand that laws are important because they maintain order and hold our society together. Your energy is bound to the traditional laws or the older customs. In general, lawmaking is an evolutionary process. 
Rules are establishing over time, sometimes taking thousands of years, they change. We cannot just abandon all laws and choose new ones because there needs to be a consistency. You have the energy to provide that slicing force and remind us of the rules that hold us together. So here you see why we call it the gate of limitation. The 60 is on the cusp of Capricorn. It has to do with the structures of society. Here on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have Pluto and the Sun together in gate 60, right before the brave new year, right before gate 41. Pluto has to do with transformation, with shadow work. Here in the gate of limitation, when the Sun is illuminating, we need to look at the things that are seemingly obstacles for us and the things that we need to let go of before we move on into the new year. Here with the opposition to Lilith. Lilith is the archetype that was thrown out of paradise because she was too wild and couldn't manage her. So he chose Eve instead. Here it has to do with being thrown out of Eden and not have our needs fulfilled and being rejected. There can be a lot of suppressed anger. We see here that Lilith is together with the earth which is also a feminine archetype. With the 56 here, that's the gate of enrichment. But in the low frequency, it has to do with not being fulfilled. What's beautiful here is that you see this blue triangle. There is a trine with Lilith, the moon, and Neptune. Those feminine archetypes, all of them are feminine, and they're in water signs, where I believe there's a possibility for some change, some healing, some letting go here in the emotional waters so that we can be less heavy as we're moving on to the new year. In the Jinka chart for Tuesday, we have the incarnation cross we just spoke about, 60, 56, 50, and 3 here in the activation sequence. The main archetype is the magician. The first line is the creator. So here this day, it's about the creative magician. That's the archetype that you can play with, that you can embody. In the evolution sphere, we have the 56, which is about enrichment. The first line in the evolution is breaking out of self-centeredness by believing that it's possible with win-win relationships. With all these third lines that we see inside of the hologenetic profile, and also here in the radius and the purpose, there's a lot of playfulness, there's a lot of dynamism. It's not a day to have an agenda and think that everything is going to go the way we expected with this conjunction with Pluto and the sun. It can definitely be unexpected. And I feel that having the radiance and the SQ and the 50 speaks to that process of weeding out anything that is corrupt, anything that we don't need in the script anymore, allowing that to transform, to die to not be a limitation anymore so that we can move on in a more innocent 56 and in a, in a more pure 12 way into the new year. The only channel that we see here in the body graph is the moon in the 14 and then Uranus in the two. So that connection is creating the channel of the beat, which is the keeper of the key. So there is an energy that's being circulated through the inner work that we are doing. We also have the six here in the attraction sphere, which is a Virgo energy, which has to do with creating balance. So both looking at the fifth, it's about balance. When it comes to the six, it's about balance. The purpose here is eternal child. So we can build, play, create card houses that then the wind blows away or sand castle that then the waves take away. It's not so much about what's going to be forever because everything is evolving. And the third Gene Key, the third line, especially knows that. So it's really living the moment. And it's that kind of celebration of life, even if we're doing deep shadow work. It doesn't matter if it's tragedy or comedy somehow. The third line is part of that whole messiness of being human, of the things that need to die, the things that need to live, the things that are transforming. All that is part of life. And the more we dare to say yes to that, the more we're coming back to our innocence, to our purity. I also wanted to remind you of the masterclass today. It's called a setup and it's a roadmap to Aquarius season. So we're using the energy in Aquarius, the archetypes that are activated from January 20 to February 18th to create a roadmap. And if you 
attend all the master classes for each of the 12 seasons this year, you're going to have a solid foundational understanding of astrology in terms of the 12 signs, 12 houses, and the nine planets. You can still register. And if you can't attend, you'll get a replay and the PDF for the roadmap. Thank you so much. Bye for now.